no seat belts, no airbags, and yet the big yellow school bus is the safest vehicle on the road. Sounds crazy, right? But the numbers don't lie. Your child is 70 times more likely to get to school safely on a bus than in a car. And here's what makes it even weirder. Safety comes from design choices most cars would never use. So how does a 14-ton steel box without belts keep millions of kids alive every day? Let's break it down. Back in the early 1900s, safety wasn't even part of the conversation. If a wagon could carry kids, it became a school bus. No seat belts, no steel frames. Some were just wooden crates nailed onto truck beds. The earliest versions were even called kid hacks. It's not a nickname. You were literally hacking together a way to move students. These things were tall, narrow, and top-heavy. A sharp turn could tip them over like a stack of folding chairs. And if they crashed, there wasn't a steel cage to hold them together, just splintered wood and maybe some thin metal crumpling like tinfoil. Some even had exposed fuel tanks strapped underneath, which meant a minor collision could become a full-blown fireball. The problem? No one had standards. Different states bought different buses, and some rural areas used whatever was cheapest, even if that meant kids riding to school in horse-drawn carriages well into the 1930s. Then came 1939. That year, a group of engineers, state officials, and educators met in New York to fix this. They agreed on one thing, uniform safety rules. From that meeting came the now standard steel frame, stronger brakes, improved seating, and most famously, school bus yellow. That color was chosen because it's one of the easiest shades to see in early morning in low light. The goal was clear, make sure drivers saw the bus before they ever saw the kids. Over the next few decades, school buses evolved fast. By the 1950s, they had flashing red lights, stop arms, better suspension, and more emergency exits. But what really changed the game wasn't what you could see from the outside, it was what engineers did under the hood and inside the shell. Number one, steel skeleton. Think of a school bus like a soda can, rigid, round, and strong enough to take pressure from all sides. Modern buses are built around an internal steel frame, like a cage running through the body. It's not the thin metal you see on the outside that keeps kids safe. It's this hidden skeleton that spreads out crash forces across the whole bus. If a car hits a bus, that steel cage doesn't crumple like a tin can, it holds its shape. And if the bus rolls over, the roof stays intact, keeping that survival space for the kids inside. That's not luck, that's structural engineering at work. Number two, wide, low, and stable. Early buses had a major problem. They were built like towers on wheels. Tall body, narrow base. That's a recipe for disaster. So engineers fixed that by widening the wheelbase and lowering the center of gravity. Today's school buses are planted. They sit low and wide, which makes it way harder for them to flip over, even during sharp turns or emergency swerves. Combine that with custom suspension systems that absorb bumps and keep the frame balanced, and you've got a vehicle that stays upright even when things go sideways. Number three, compartmentalization, the invisible seat belt. Now to the big question, why don't school buses have seat belts? Here's the truth, they do, just not the kind you're thinking of. Instead of strapping kids in, engineers designed the whole interior of the bus to act like one big crash protection system. It's called compartmentalization. Seats are placed close together. They're high-backed, thickly padded, and energy absorbing. In a crash, kids are thrown forward into the back of the seat ahead, but that seat is cushioned and anchored to take the hit. It's like an egg carton. Each seat is its own padded compartment that protects the child without needing a belt. And unlike a seat belt, which only works if it's worn correctly, this system works automatically for every student, every time. Number four, mass equals momentum control. Here's a little physics. The average school bus weighs between 24,000 to 33,000 pounds. That's about 10 to 15 times heavier than a car. In a crash, that extra mass works in your favor. The bus slows down more gradually than a car, so passengers aren't hit with the same whiplash level force. It's like easing to a stop instead of slamming into a wall. That extra time reduces injuries dramatically. Number five, emergency escape systems. What if something goes wrong and the kids need to get out? Modern buses are packed with redundant exits. A side emergency door, push-out windows, roof hatches, even fireproof hammers to break glass. They're designed so that no matter what angle the bus ends up in, kids and drivers have a way out. And to prevent fires, fuel tanks are buried deep within the steel frame and wrapped in crash-resistant barriers. On top of that, many interior materials are made of fire-retardant plastics and fabrics so if a fire does start, it spreads slowly, not instantly. Number six, visibility and safety on the outside. Buses don't just protect kids inside, they're also designed to control what happens around them. You've seen the stop sign arm that swings out, that's not optional, it's backed by law. In the US, when a school bus extends the stop sign and flashes its red lights, cars from both directions must stop 
even on a two-lane highway. Some buses also have a crossing arm that extends from the front bumper, makes kids walk at least three meters ahead of the bus so they stay in the driver's line of sight the whole time. And to make sure drivers don't miss anything, newer buses include cross-view mirrors, wide-angle side mirrors, and in some places, 360-degree camera systems. Drivers have eyes on every angle, front, sides, and back. All this means students are safer even outside the bus during the most dangerous moment of the ride, pick up and drop off. So how does all this compare to school buses in other countries? In North America, buses rely on size, structure, and compartmentalization, but in most of Europe, things look different. Students often ride minibuses or regular city coaches, and those buses almost always have seat belts. In fact, many European countries require them by law. The reasoning? Smaller vehicles don't offer the same mass or internal design, so seat belts provide that extra layer of protection. Due to narrow streets and tight parking, buses in Japan are often much smaller. These minibuses usually include seat belts and pedestrian sensors, since kids often walk or bike the final stretch to school. China made major changes after several deadly school bus crashes in the early 2010s. Today, their buses look a lot like US models. Bright yellow paint, flashing lights, GPS trackers, and trained attendants on board. They even use facial recognition tech for student check-ins. South Korea mandates seat belts for all children under six, along with alert systems that remind drivers to check the seats before leaving. In some developing regions, though, the situation is still dangerous. Kids ride in overcrowded vans, tuk-tuks, or even the backs of pickup trucks. But global organizations are working to introduce safer regulated school transport systems in those areas, too. So while the designs vary, the mission is the same. Get kids to school and back alive every single day. Now let's get into the hot debate. Should seat belts be mandatory on school buses in the US? Some states like New Jersey and California already require them, but most don't. The logic behind that, large buses are extremely safe and adding seat belts may not make a big difference in most crash scenarios. Plus if kids wear the belt wrong, like under the arm or behind the back, it could cause more harm than good, especially in a crash or rollover. Then there's the cost. Retrofitting every school bus in America would cost billions of dollars and safety studies suggest that the benefit might be small compared to the price tag. On the other hand, some experts argue that even one life saved is worth it. Seat belts also keep kids from jumping or sliding around during turns or stops, which can reduce distractions for the driver. And if a rollover does happen, the seat belt might be the thing that keeps a child from hitting the ceiling or getting ejected. The truth? There's no perfect answer yet. Some believe in adding belts, others believe in improving passive protection. But what everyone agrees on is this, school buses must keep evolving. We're already seeing buses with lane departure warnings, automatic emergency braking, and even AI systems that track driver alertness. Some prototypes are even exploring autonomous driving, although parents might not be ready to send their kids off on a driverless bus just yet. As the world moves towards cleaner energy, electric school buses are becoming more common. They're quieter, cheaper to maintain, and produce zero emissions, but they cost more up front. That's the next big frontier figuring out how to balance safety, cost, and sustainability. The yellow school bus may not look like high tech, but under its simple shell is a masterpiece of safety engineering. No seat belts, no problem, because every corner, seat, and window is designed to protect. And while buses will keep changing, going electric, going smarter, the mission stays the same. Keep kids safe every day, every ride. So next time you see one, you'll know why it works.